SolidWorks Live Solve. So when it comes to this SolidWorks model here, we're gonna do a live solve of this, this model here, the uh, 4th of July fireworks. So welcome everybody, welcome to this SolidWorks 3D modeling live solve. I know a lot of people enjoyed seeing this 4th of July fireworks challenge last week. And today we're gonna go through and we're gonna talk about how a SolidWorks expert would think through a challenge like this and how and how a SolidWorks expert would try to resolve a challenge like this. We're also gonna show some pretty cool little, you know, more nuanced techniques that we can use when we're in SolidWorks to solve, uh, solve situations like this. So first of all, what I want you to do whenever you start a new 3D CAD challenge is ask yourself, where is the origin gonna be in this model it's like the very first thing you want to ask yourself and so to answer that question you want to look for things like is there symmetry in the model if there is symmetry in the model then that's going to help you locate the origin so like in this case there's symmetry in two directions so the origin's probably going to be right here looking down from the top so now the only question is where should the origin be looking at this thing from the front and i think it's fair to say that there's a lot of dimensions that seem to be coming from the base of this rocket so like this 15 height, the, the some of the dimensions down here are coming from the base of the rocket. So now we've got the location of the origin. The origin is gonna be right here. It's gonna be centered looking down from the top and it's gonna be where most of the dimensions are coming from. And those are the things you're looking for when you're trying to decide where to locate the origin in a new model. Then what you need to do is you need to kind of uh, discretize the model, meaning you need to break down the model into different sections and decide how you're gonna model those sections. Now, if we were doing this for engineering purposes, we would probably take into consideration that the parts are actually made as different parts. But since we're just doing this all as one single model, we don't have to worry about that as much. So I think the way that I would discretize this model is I would, I would really probably do it in three sections. I would say that the fin is one section, so the fin and the pattern of the fin. The main body with the cone up top is another section, and then the cut extrude on the inside is a section of the model. So it's like I'm breaking up the model into these different sections, so then I can start deciding how am I gonna model each section and what order am I gonna model them in? Well, since the, the cone here, the main cone here, is um, found really foundational to these fins existing, I think it makes sense to model the main cone first. So the first sketch that I create is gonna be the sketch for this main cone. And this is something else you always wanna be thinking about when you're trying to decide how to go from a 2D print to a 3D model. You wanna ask yourself, what's, you know, where's my origin gonna be? Well, we, we already kind of figured that out. The origin's gonna be right at the center here. And then you wanna ask yourself, what's my very first sketch gonna look like? And I think that for this model, my very first sketch is gonna look something like this. It's gonna come over, up, over, it's gonna come up at an angle here, and then it's gonna come straight down to the bottom. And that's what my very first sketch is gonna look like. And by doing this exercise, by thinking to yourself, what's my first sketch gonna look like? It really sets you up nicely to go through and create the rest of the model. So now what's my next sketch gonna look like? My next sketch is gonna look like the sketch of this fin. And I think I'm gonna bring the fin all the way into the center of the model. So my second sketch is gonna look something like this. And then I'll be able to extrude that and do a circular pattern. And then what's my final sketch gonna look like? My final sketch is gonna capture some of this information that I'm gonna need for the cut extrude. So it's gonna be a half triangle, a half rectangle, and then maybe this area that's coming down here. And then I'm gonna be able to do my cut revolve for that final section. So whenever you're trying to, to go from a 2D print to a 3D model, this is the exercise that you want to do. And now that I've done that exercise, I'm ready to do maybe a, a 2D screen capture. So let me bring up my screen uh, screen capture software here and we're gonna grab a, a capture of this, of this print, move that over onto our second screen and let's get into creating this model using SolidWorks. So here we are in SolidWorks, and now we're gonna take that game plan that we just came up with, and we're gonna turn that into an actual 3D model. Now, along the way with this model, I'm gonna show you a lot of cool tips and tricks. So uh, if you, uh, even if you already did this rocket, take a look, you're gonna, you're gonna learn some pretty cool stuff. And at the end, we're gonna show you how to do that candy striping as well. So here we go, new part. This part is gonna be in inches and 1060 aluminum. And we're gonna go front plane, begin a sketch, because we decided our first sketch is gonna be that kind of revolve shape of the rocket. 
Now we're going to create a center line. So S key center line, single click here. We're going to move up and we're going to bring the center line up to a height of two inches. And now we can jump into the S key again. We could maybe make a rectangle here. Let's say we make a rectangle that has a height of 11 inches and then has a width here of uh, 1.5 over two, since that's going to be our diameter. And then we can hit escape, get rid of that uh, dimension that points of five and then create another dimension. This dimension is going to start at that vertical line and then it's going to go to this vertical center line that we created. And then when we cross over that vertical center line, that gives us a doubled dimension for that 1.5 inch diameter. So now the final feature that we need to create or the final element of this sketch is we need to create that triangle shape or half triangle shape. So we'll come over here like so, come up like so, create that kind of half triangle shape. And now we're gonna create a dimension for the overall height of the model. So all the way down here to the bottom of 15 inches. And then we're gonna create an angle dimension. So the angle dimension is gonna go from this um, half half line of the uh, triangle or the, the uh, hypotenuse of the triangle. And we're gonna hold shift and click that center line down at the bottom there. And it's really, you don't have to hold shift ahead of time, but when you if you hold shift afterwards, then you see you can get this doubled dimension. So it's kind of a cool little hidden SolidWorks trick. If you wanna get the doubled dimension for the angle, you have to hold shift. So we're gonna type in 69 there. There's our angle for that. And we are ready to move on to the next feature in this uh, process, really in the process of building this model. So for that next feature, you know, we could take this and turn it into a revolve, but since we're gonna be referencing this sideline of the uh, rocket as we're creating this next feature, maybe it makes sense to create that fin right away. So I'm gonna come over here with a line to 2.25, and then I'm gonna come up vertical here with a line of 0 0.125 for the radius. So you can see that what I did there was I just created a, a center line. This is not a solid line, it's just a center line that comes over here to a distance of 2.25 since that's where the center of that fin exists on our drawing. So now that I've got that line coming over, that line coming up, now I could get in there and maybe do like a center line arc. So this is radius 0.125 and it's gonna start here and come around to something like this. And then I could jump into a line command and I could click this endpoint, come back, touch the endpoint, come off of it, and then type in a radius here. So that outer radius is a radius of five. And then I could do the same thing here with this inner radius. So click this point here, come back, touch the end point, come off with a tangent arc. I know we could just do it with the tangent arc command, but we're gonna be using the line command a lot in this process, so. And so there we go, now we've created those two arcs. Now at this point, what I like to do is just hit escape and kind of drag the end point of the arc. So hit escape here and kind of drag the end point of the arc and just kind of get these close to where they need to be. Now by close to where they need to be, what I mean is on the print, what the print is calling out is it's calling out that these are gonna start at a distance of 0 0.25 uh, from the, the base up to the fin. Let's zoom in here a little bit. So 0 0.25 from the base up to the start of the pin and then uh, 1.25 where the fin touches the body at tangent. So what you might think is you could create a sketch point there and then use that sketch point to define your dimensions. Well, here's a little shortcut for helping with that. Instead of choosing the sketch point and then coming in here and hoping that you get intersection, which most of the time when I try to do that, I end up getting coincident instead of intersection. I end up missing it a little bit. Instead of doing it that way, just do a crossing select where you pick the, the line and the arc and then click the point command. And this creates what's called a virtual sharp, which is just a point, it's just a sketch point with an intersection command. So do a crossing select, select both of these, then click the point command. And then that gives you a point at the intersection of those two entities. That gives you a point at the intersection of those two entities. So now you can add those dimensions that we were looking at on the print. This dimension is 0 0.250. And this dimension here for that overall width of the fin is our 1.25. So it's kind of a cool little trick that you can use to uh, make sure that you've got your point exactly at the intersection. Uh, we just need to make sure that this is tangent here, or sorry, make sure that this is vertical. There we go. That sketch is nice and black and fully defined. And that gives us the location of the fin and the main body for the revolve. So let's uh, go into our features command, revolve. And now we're gonna choose to revolve this region, this region, this region and this region and our axis of revolution. So those are all landing down here under sketch contour. And our axis of revolution is gonna be this axis right here. That revolves that into that main shape. And then I'm just gonna show that sketch again. And now I'll click on the sketch first and then I'll choose extrude. 
And now once again down here in our selected regions or contours, I'm going to pick this region and this region. That's going to go out to a depth of 0 0.125 for the fin. And then I'll right mouse button in the background and say mid plane and then right mouse button again. So there we go. Now we've got our fin. Now I'm going to take that fin and I'm going to do a, a circular pattern. So I'll just pick on that boss, hold control, pick on this face here, let go of control, jump into circular pattern. Whoops. Sorry, that got that revolve as a feature. There we go, pick on that face. And then that is gonna go out to six instances equally spaced across 360 degrees. So there is our fin for that rocket. And now the only thing left to do is to add the interior geometry. Now, if we right mouse button on this sketch and we go to sketch color, we can change that color to something that really pops out. And that's gonna make it easier for us to reference that sketch while we're creating the, the next feature or the next sketch. So here what we can do is we can go into our front plane, begin a sketch, and now what we want to do is we want to create a line here which is parallel to this line here. So we go S key, we go to begin a line command, we come over. This is a this is definitely an advanced trick that I'm going to show you guys here. I think some of you more experienced users will really appreciate this, but I think some of you newer users will will be able to learn from this and use this. So you can see here that I'm, I'm in the front plane. I'm going to begin the line command. I'm going to click here to begin the line command. I'm going to come down. I'm going to hold my cursor over this line here. And that kind of wakes up the, the parallel relationship. But you see the relationship is showing in white. So when a relationship shows in yellow, that means the relationship will be added. But when the relationship shows in white, that means the relationship will not be added. So if I click here and then I come over here to close this thing off, uh, what we'll see is at that point is not enforcing a parallel relationship. However, those lines are exactly parallel. And what that means is if I add a linear dimension from line to line, that'll create a parallel relationship, just kind of like embedded in the linear dimension. So if I, if I start out here by going to create the line, you'll see that it doesn't pick up on parallel. I don't get anything. If I hold my cursor over this line first and then come back, now it gives me a white parallel relationship, which means it is parallel, but it's not gonna add the, the relationship, the parameter. So now I'll close off this triangle and then I'll jump into smart dimension. So S key smart dimension, and I'll create a dimension from this line to this line. And that dimension is gonna be 0 0.1. And I'll create a dimension from this line to, well, actually I won't add that one yet, just to show you before and after. See, now when I go to move this around, parallel is being enforced, not through a sketch relationship, but through a sketch dimension, which kind of has parallel built into it. So it's, it's really nuanced, but definitely one to look out for, and it can save you some time as you're working through SolidWorks, uh, recognizing that you can make two lines parallel using a dimension. If you just remember to dimension from line to line, don't pick the end point, but pick like line to line here. And now I'm enforcing parallel between those two lines. Kind of cool. So now I just need to create the remaining geometry here. So for the remaining geometry, I'm going to create a rectangle that comes down like so. And then I will create a vertical line here and then a line that comes down at an angle. Try not to pick up midpoint when you do this line. That can be a, a mistake that uh, people can make. So bring a line down here to this lower line and then finish off here at this point. And then all we need to do is trim, trim this line here, and then take this point and just merge it down here to this point. Let's merge those two. Then let's give ourselves another center line so that we can get some doubled dimensions like we did earlier. And that double dimension is gonna be from here to here, a double dimension to one inch. It's gonna be from here. Again, it, it automatically picks up on that center line once you do the first one. So this one's gonna be 0 0.180. And now we'll just do some standard dimensions like a dimension here to three inches and a dimension here against this wall of 0 0.125 and then a final dimension here for this upper chamber 2.5 inches and that should do it for that that sketch let's turn that into a cut revolve so we go features revolved cut and then we're going to say yep that's it it's a nice clean sketch with one single center line so solidworks automatically picks up on that center line and now i can hit the green check mark and let's look at this thing in a section view oh yeah that looks good that looks real good and so now if we look at our center here control q to rebuild the correct answer is 1776 so we did it we got it correct well done well done so now one final little uh, tip here is the ability to candy stripe this this model and uh the way that we can candy stripe this model let me hide this sketch that was here the way that we can candy stripe this model is through using what's called a split line so what a split line does is it lets you create sketch geometry 
and then use that sketch geometry to take a face and split the face. So I could go insert curves, split line, and I can take this current sketch and project it onto this surface. And when I'm done, what's happened is I've split that surface into three surfaces. So now I could color this one red and color this one white and I'd have that candy striping. Well, we're not doing this with just a, a sketch. We're doing this with an actual 3D curve. So we have to generate that 3D curve. And this is an old trick that we learn in advanced part modeling or in surface modeling. And what the trick is, is if you go front plane, begin a sketch and you sketch a line. So here's a line. This line is gonna act as a sweep path. And then if you go top plane and you begin a sketch and you sketch a line on the top plane perpendicular, this line is gonna act as a sweep profile. And then if you go into the command surfaces and you choose surface sweep, you can sweep this profile along this path. And there you go, there's a surface sweep. But in the definition of a sweep, you can go into options and you could say twist along path or specify twist value. So I could say here that I want this to twist to a total number of revolutions of four. And boom, that gives us a nice twisty surface that I can use to split this face. Now, the truth is I can't split this face right now. If I go curve split line and I say intersection, so instead of projection, which you use with a 2D sketch, we're using intersection to intersect using this tool against this surface. The thing is this tool is not actually splitting that surface and, and leaving us with two separate faces. So it's not gonna work if you just have one of those little twisty things. What you need are two of these little twisty things. So if I go to the command um, insert features, move copy, I can make a copy of this body and then I can use the rotation option and rotate it around to 180 degrees, 180. Or if you wanted to have three copies, you could do it. You could probably do it with a circular pattern too. But the point is now I've got two bodies here. So surface body one, surface body two. And so now if I go to the command insert curve split line, now I can choose intersection and choose both of these bodies, one, two bodies. So there's one body. Okay, there's, there's one body selected. There's two bodies selected. Both of these bodies are now selected as the intersecting tool. And so now I can go down here to the, the uh, face to split and I can choose this face here. And there you see that candy striping splitting that face. So now I can hit the green check mark and now I can delete these bodies. I don't need these bodies anymore. So insert features, delete body, or just pick the bodies from the tree and press delete on your keyboard. So delete those bodies. And so now I've got that candy striping. And so now I could go in and I could say, I want the whole part to be blue. So I'll double click on blue here to make the whole part blue. And I want this face to be white. So drag and drop and then pick the face. And then I want this face to be red. So drag and drop and pick this face here and make that face red. Pick face from the, the flyout menu. So now the remaining features get added and there we go. That nice candy striping along that face. So that's a combination of doing a surface sweep with twist, then doing um, uh, insert features, uh, copy body, and then doing a, uh, after you do the copy body, then doing the, um, uh, what's it called? The uh, uh, insert features split using intersection, picking those two bodies and then picking that face and then adjusting the color just for those faces. So pretty cool, pretty cool. Jao says, don't forget to go to the barber shop. Yep, remember to go to the barber shop. That is good advice. So 70, 1776 is the correct answer for that one. And guys, if you enjoyed that live solve, be sure to like this video, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe. We really appreciate your support. Uh, feel free to visit us at twotalltoby.com slash donate. Always can take some support there as well. But I hope you enjoyed that SolidWorks Live Solve. And now let's get into our final answer for today's live stream. Don't forget to support the channel. Hit the like button. Hit subscribe. We're almost at 2 o'clock. So if you have to leave right now, thank you for joining us. But make sure that you hit that like button, subscribe, share, and share. Very much appreciated. Thank you, Paul. Coming in.